Welcome to Virtual Wednesdays. My name is Francesca D'Alessio, and I'm so glad you could join us. I am delighted to present to you the first program in a three-part virtual series celebrating fashion designer Patrick Kelly. This series is in support of our latest exhibition, Patrick Kelly, Runway of Love. Kelly is remembered for his exuberant and inclusive runway shows, which were enriched and enlivened by the work of leading black fashion models. Tonight's conversation explores Kelly's unique runway presentations with insights from Audrey Smaltz, legendary fashion show producer and Patrick Kelly runway show coordinator, Sharon Magic Jordan Roach, model and Patrick Kelly fit model and muse, and Pat Cleveland, superstar. The panel is moderated by the one and only Andre Leon Talley, who you might know as the former creative director at Vogue magazine, but has had truly such a deep impact on fashion and needs no introduction. We are thrilled to welcome this incredible panel. Please help me give a warm welcome to all of our guests tonight. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Andre Leon Talley, for those who don't know, and I'm here to host a wonderful celebration of the American designer born in Mississippi, Patrick Kelly whose current exhibit, the definitive exhibit, Retrospective, is on at De Young. Patrick was the first African-American who took Paris by storm, who succeeded, who was self-made, self-taught, and became a world-class, a global, global influence. He dressed celebrities. An unusual person he dressed was the late Bette Davis towards the end of her life. And he dressed his friends here, Pat Cleveland, Audrey Smalls, and Magic. Patrick was not just a great American designer. He embraced and he represented more than the word fashion. Mm -hmm. He was the, a true American spirit. He was the, the man who created magic. <laughs> that was it. He created magic through love. He never had a mean word to say about anyone. He simply loved life and he, he lived by the word of God and he just embraced life until he was sick. He lived, he did not judge people. He was extraordinary. You, to be around Patrick was to be in a, a marvelous moving rainbow. Yeah. And I think it was that way during the collections and during the preparation of the collections. And he not only was just a designer, his clothes, I can trace some of his inspirations back to Scaparelli. He yeah. is aligned to me to Scaparelli. Scaparelli did these motifs with buttons. She'd make designs out of buttons, trompe l'oeil, sweated, knitted sweaters and things. So he's not just a trendy designer. He is a serious person who also had some of the best shows. He helped people, he loved people. Now we have with us tonight, Audrey Smaltz, formerly modeled herself and one of the famous commentators of the great Ebony Fashion Fair. She commented on the Ebony Fashion Fair for seven years. She was the left hand, right hand, back hand and forehand of the late great Eunice Johnson. And she is now uh, the owner and founder of Ground Crew, backstage tech crew for fashion shows. Then we have the great, great, great legendary Josephine Baker of the fashion runways of the 20th century and print as well, Pat Cleveland. Pat Cleveland was discovered on the subway by the late Carrie Donovan from Vogue. One morning on the subway, Pat Cleveland was discovered and then she went into Vogue and became the fitting model and then it moved on and on and Pat Cleveland became this wonderful luminous, illuminating sphere <laughs> and spirit of the fashion world. And we have the beautiful magic here. Magic who is just a joy to look at and just represents so much that Patrick stood for. Love, helping people. He loved to help people. Magic, start with you. He helped you to meet the great Monsieur Saint Laurent. How did that happen? Wow, this is great. My first season in Paris ever. I never knew anyone. I was a brand new model. So Patrick said, I'm going to make the call for you to go to see the Miss Year. I was so nervous. Now, everybody know that Salarat is the king of couture. Yeah. So <laughs> I go into the atelier. I go into the atelier, this tight black Patrick Kelly wrap dress, hair pulled back in a shingyong. And they said, come inside. I walk inside and the monsieur was right there. He said, would you walk for me? And I walked for him and he said, treasure lead. 
you have this show. I ran out of the atelier. I called Patrick back. I said, Patrick, I got the biggest show. I got the show. I got the show. He said, I knew you could do it. And that's really a true story. He was one that believed in me. And to send me to the couturier, the couturier of all time. Oh, couturier. Oh, you okay. got your start because of Patrick Kelly. Because Kelly of Patrick. Patrick Kelly. Because Patrick remembered people who helped him. Now, I know one of the people who helped him the most was Miss Audrey Smalls. Yes. How did you meet Patrick Audrey? Tell us how you met him and how your friendship well, I, evolved. When you introduced me, you talked about the Ebony Fashion Fair. And I did the Ebony Fashion Fair. I was the commentator for seven yes. years. 1970 to 1977. And when we would go to Atlanta, Patrick would be in Atlanta and I would see him backstage. But I don't even remember all of those times that I saw him. When I really got to know him, we were putting on this huge fashion show for hairdressers at Lincoln Center in New York. And one of the hairdressers, uh, Mr. Uh, James Harris was having a scene of models and I got clothes from Bill Blass. Well, Patrick Kelly was the stylist for, for James Harris's hair. What he did to those Bill Blass ensembles, <laughs> it was so creative, so exciting. <laughs> the music was exciting. I was you there. Know, Patrick always had the best music. And when we worked for the fashion shows, we worked all day long. When we worked, we had good music. And you know, when he ended his fashion show it was always a spiritual, honey, he ended on a spiritual and most likely it was Aretha Franklin singing. That's how they would end the shows. Uh, Patrick was just so fabulous and so happy that he gave, he didn't give us money. I don't know about other people, but I know he paid me in clothes. All of us. So happy because 30 years later, I still have the clothes. I would not have that money. I have the most beautiful clothes and I've given some to FIT and I've gave, I gave two outfits for, to the Dijung in San Francisco. So I'm, if you're there, go see it. And now I have my little, my little baby doll, my little black baby. And we used to dress these little baby dolls. I just put her right there just so you can oh. see. Oh, we <laughs> love that. I still have my, I still have my overalls. Oh, and my buttons. goodness. Do, do I have buttons? Wow. Yeah. Blouses and, and coats and jackets. And I'm show your leopard blessed. scarf, your long leopard scarf in silk, your bikini silk, leopard motif scarf. You know, the scarf oh, is just shuttle. Oh, my. Oh, and this is the bikini leopard scarf. Yes. I oh. love it. I oh. love it. It went with the, the dress. The dress is, is not here right now. I, if I could just <laughs> get into the dress, <laughs> but I can I still get it. into the scarf. <laughs> and Pat, Pat, do you have any dolls? I do, and I think somebody took it because it's so cute. I can't. It's <laughs> always full of things. It God, always has this little arms out like you. this. It has this little arms out, and it's all nude and brand new. And it's like everybody had them in Paris when he had his show, and he gave them out as little pins. So everyone had them on the lapel. All the ladies and the, and the audience had these little dolls, and it. <laughs> Spreading out through Paris, these little dolls with the arms out looking for love. Oh, Pat, when did you first work with Patrick? What was the first show? How did you meet Patrick? Well, it was kind of an odd moment in my life. I was sort of lonely in my apartment and I knew this hairdresser from Henry Bindell's and he said, oh, I, there's this young designer who just came up from Atlanta and he wants to meet you, but he's so talented, but he's working out of his friend's closet in his friend's apartment. And would, can he come over and meet you? I said, oh my God, yes, I'm, I don't have anything to do tonight. Why don't you guys come over? And he brought Patrick over to the apartment. And when I answered the door, there was that Southern little boy dressed in overalls, all juicy and cute with a beard. He was like so fresh and shiny. It looked like he was just a newborn lamb, new to the slaughter. I said, oh. so new, he's so new and so, but he wasn't naive. He had a sort of really deep intelligence, like, you know, spiritually intelligent. The, Spiritual, the, spirituality. Yeah, the reason we got along so well is because he believed in God and I believed in God too. And we were talking about God that day and we said, oh, wouldn't it be a miracle if I could go to Paris? And I said, miracles do come true and they're going to uh, come beautiful. true for you too. And so 
I um I surprised. So Pat, when you were on, when you went to do the, the shows with Patrick, what was the energy like with Patrick in, in the lineup when you were just before you going on stage? What did he say to you to make oh, you go out? I have to talk a little bit more about our first meeting because. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry to drop. Is that um, you know Patrick um, was finding that he couldn't take root in New York. He was so talented, but there was no place for a young black boy from Atlanta to be, you know, swift, uh, uh, taken away to stardom as quickly as some of the other guys from New York. And so um, he said to me, oh, tomorrow night we're going to go do this hair show and you want to come. And I said, mm -hmm, OK, come on over. So he came over and he. He showed me what he had for me to wear and they did my hair like Josephine Baker because the one thing we had in common is that we both loved Josephine Baker. And I had all of these records I brought back from Paris that I got at the flea market that nobody ever heard. And we put the records on and then we got dressed up and I put in my fishnet stockings and he hung pearls all over them. And then he gave me this tiny little pink bathing suit that he made. Um, the top was made out of teacups, those paper cups that you get the water Order in with fabric wrapped around them and a string <laughs> of fake bananas, plastic bananas. And we wrapped those around my waist, you know, one of those homemade outfits. And I threw my Yves Saint Laurent coat around my shoulders. <laughs> he had this feather and he stuck it in the top of my head. And we went walking from my apartment in Central Park South on 59th Street in Central Park South to Columbus Avenue where they had the hair show. Now, Columbus Avenue was not all that chic as it is today. No. It was just like they did the car shows there. So we went <laughs> and they had the hair show. And so I got up and I sang my number under the spotlight for all those hairdressers. In my pale, say petite bourgeois, my donkey, my donkey. And I sang and we just fell in love with Josephine. And after that, we talked to each other, but I had to go back to Paris. But I had promised him something. I had promised him a miracle. So I went and bought him a first class ticket to Paris. And I couldn't give it to him in person. So I gave it to the hairdresser and I said, when you see Patrick next time, please give him this ticket and say, come and meet me in Paris. And he took that ticket and I knew he would do something with it. The seed was not wasted. He took it and he made something out of himself. And I hadn't seen him in a year or so, or maybe two. And by the time I got back to Paris, he had his own atelier, not far from the Cafe Fleur. And this guy came over to me and he said, a friend of yours wants to see you today. And I was having my coffee at the Cafe Fleur. And I said, okay, I'll come and see who he is. And I went next door and down the stairs, downstairs, there in this building next to the Cafe Fleur was his atelier on, in the basement. And I walked in and it was just like homie had his gollywogs and his Josephine Baker posters and his little dolls. And it smelled like grits and chicken and it smelled like collard greens in there. And he said, come to the back room, all the girls are here. And all these beautiful models were there from America who eating never- What, eating what? Fried chicken at Patrick Cook's? Eating chicken yeah, he and never, he always made lunch for all the girls. Always. Who was a good cook. And before always. he did anything, like before he, we ate, he he, he would say, make us all hold the hands and pray. Mm -hmm. and, oh. then, and that's something we always did together. Always. And the wonderful thing is that that was what something he had that was the magic for me was his spiritual soul. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think that's why he had the opportunity to have all of these lovely girls around because he was nourishing them and, and building them up like he did for you, Magic. And yes, he, he did. did made all the girls feel so welcome and they came in from New York and they'd never been in Paris and he dressed them and sent them out and they had success. And it was really, oh my God, it made my heart burst open with joy because he really did what he said he was gonna do and he kept the doors open and people had a good time with him because he could cook good. <laughs> <laughs> Audrey, he just made you feel good. Did he make you feel good as a friend? Did he make you, did you just feel loved by him? Did you just oh, love? Oh, felt love. But, but Pat brought up something. Just before the fashion show, we're all backstage, all of the models, all of the dressers, everybody who's going to be working that show, we would get into a circle, all whole hands, and we would have a silent prayer that the show would be the greatest. And I'd have my headsets on. <laughs> 
out, I'd look out and I, there was a guy named Terry. He was at the other end and we'd send those models out and it was the A team and the B team. And the models, 11 models would go on out, honey and strut, and that would be a theme. And maybe the theme was gollywogs. And then the mm -hmm. next group would go out and that theme would be dice. Each theme had a had a each scene had a theme, and it was mm. just incredible how we did those shows, and and the music oh the hottest music and it Patrick has. opened Ever. up his show himself. He opened up the show. He'd come on stage before the model, and he'd paint a heart. He'd have a magic marker, and he would paint a heart. I can see him doing it now, and then he'd run, and then the music would hit. And here comes the model strolling down, and I would send him out. And I, I have to, I have to say something. Lise, you know, all the girls in the 90s, it was like a real 1920s. And he would have that theme, yes. And they would just burst out in all of these black models. It was like the Follies Berger or something. <laughs> You've never seen so much rhythm on the stage and the music. Oh, the music was so original. Well, when we did the show at the Moulin Rouge, Yes. That was incredible. We did the show. He, I don't know how he got the Moulin Rouge, but Rouge. John, we did our show at the Moulin Rouge. What a, what a show. He was so special, so humble, so kind. And yes, he could feed you because you, when you worked for Patrick, you worked all day long. You know, all you, day. You, you were there all day all and day. all night. Don't forget, and don't forget. All night, Paris, day. all night. <laughs> don't all forget, night. Paris, you do work all the time. It's 24 hours a day it because is. your style is about life. And when Paris opened their arms to our beautiful Patrick, they just devoured him. He was like a delicious dessert that came out of America. He brought those rhythm and blues. He brought his Southern style and his accent and his shyness and his innocence. And, and in the night, he would go to the club set dressed in tuxedo. Oh, and I have to talk about the club night. set. I have, I have to jump in right at the club set, right there. Yeah. He yeah. would dress us impeccable. And he's in his overalls and the people would gather around Patrick like the Pied Piper of Hamlet. He had an, a magnetic energy. Of course, it was beautiful girls around, but Patrick's energy, Patrick's spirit. He was so amazing because he made everyone feel beautiful. He made everyone feel loved. He made everyone feel great. And that's what I loved about him. Not only the creativity, he was very whimsical, great imagination, but he had a heart. And I want everybody to get this. He had a heart as big as all the outdoors. He loved, he loved everyone. And I believe that, I know that was a great part of his success because of his demeanor. Yes, yes. It's because of <clears throat> who he was. <clears throat> he, he met Gloria Steinem, you know, Gloria Steinem of Miss yes. Magazine, yes. founder. And Gloria Steinem introduced him to Linda Wagner of Warnico. Oh. And Miss oh. Steinem said, I have this designer I want you to meet, Linda. And Linda Warnico signed his first lucrative deal, money making uh, contract. And he was selling his clothes to Neiman Marcus. And you know how many stores Neiman Marcus had then? Yes. When Patrick in the heyday, Neiman Marcus didn't have Neiman Marcus in Houston, they had Neiman Marcus across the country. So just before Patrick died, he made a, a big lucrative deal. He became I was there. Very... Andre, I'm sorry. I, I, I was there. I was at the table with Linda Walkner. Ah. I came, I showed the pieces at Bloomingdale's. Oh my goodness. I was there with Linda Walkner when he showed the line to ink the deal. That's amazing. This is amazing. But you know, he became this great man because of who he, he was. He had the spirit of his ancestors in his body, his mother, his grandmother. He had the goodness of the blackness of the American South. He yes. took the racism of the American South, things that were pejoratively seen before, the gollywogs. Oh, and I have that. The gollywog stuff. Yes, and I he have made it iconic. He used it in prints. Look at that. He turned oh, it into something that, fun yeah, and just, joyful. He, the he joke. Made that, that became a star of joy, a symbol of joy and happiness. I think his grave at the Pale Lachaise is marked by one of his iconic emblems. I don't know which ones. Before there'll be emojis, 
Patrick was the precursor of the emojis. Yes. And I think it's fitting that he is buried at Pierre Lachaise in Paris, where there is Colette, I think, buried, Oscar Wilde, Marcel Proust, mm -hmm. Jim Marsden of the Doors, and uh, voila, Patrick Kelly. He is a fitting site, his resting place for eternity, is Pierre Lachaise in Paris. He, it so suits him because he took Paris by storm, but it was gravitas. This man had gravitas. He had a strong body of work, but then you tell us, and now he's at the young, thank God, the young did this retrospective. Yeah. They spent the money, thank God, the world will see and there will be books and hopefully there'll be movie projects. You know, you, Audrey and Pat should just be in a movie development, just talking about the wonderful joy of Patrick. What's that, Audrey? What is that? It's a very special doll that Patrick gave me many, many years ago. Aww. I love her. This is little Patrick Kelly, this little sweetie pie. It's a little girl. Mm -hmm. Is that gorgeous? I still it's have gorgeous. this. Oh, it stays and with you know, me. Patrick probably found those dolls in a thrift shop somewhere in the South. And that became his, his iconic symbol. Right. And he used it in his work. Because yes. I think Patrick came to, to, to Atlanta uh, working out of a vintage store in a beauty shop. He was selling antique vintage luggage. He was. And he found out that people was, wanted to buy old Vuittons, yes. just when they wanted to buy new Vuittons. Correct. And then Patrick moved from Atlanta. Pat, did you tell him to come to New York? Did you meet him in Atlanta? Did you tell no. him to come to New York? No, it was in New York in my apartment when he came to visit. I see, I see. Well, okay. anyway. I can I, I tell you one of Story. I have to tell you this one story. There was this fabulous Italian designer named Roberta Di Camerino. Yes. And she was a very good friend of mine. And Roberta Di Camerino said, Audrey, I need a designer to help me design my, my line. I said, I got just a designer for you. I put her and Patrick together. And Patrick went to Venice. He lined up that show for her. He put that show together. She loved it. And she... He he made a lot of money on that deal. I was so glad that Roberta asked me to find somebody to help her design her line. Mm. And Patrick went over there with uh, Elizabeth Goodrum. They went Wonderful. To, they, I yes, think they worked is. for about a year together, he and uh, wow. Roberta Di Camerino. And, she, and had a, she had a shop right in New York at the at the uh, Olympia, Olympia. Olympic Towers, Olympia. yes. Our Olympic clothes were very popular. Our clothes were very popular. You know, Very. printed velvet. And listen, Patrick helped people and people helped him. And oh, he yes, you do. He was well, boundless. He was with Antonio. He was friends with Antonio. And, yes. this, and yes. all the, the young men artists were very much in love with each other. And uh, Antonio used to sketch um, Patrick. Yes. And I remember his iconic picture, the one that I love the most, and we all seem to emulate this woman, Coco Chanel. Mm -hmm. But it's a photograph of Patrick in black and white. Yes. And he's sitting in the Chanel seat in the yes. Chanel pose. And Horst photographed him. Horst did. He was the mm -hmm. photographer of all the great stars, and he did black and white photographs. And when I saw that picture, it was as though he, he made such an impression on the French. And that was the height for me of what, where had Patrick arrived? To be photographed as a mass mm -hmm. society in the French society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was respected and loved. And loved. To a place where people are full of hatred and you have to fear for your life just because of the color of your skin. And then to have that flip and be appreciated mm -hmm. totally because of who you, your, who you are, how you look. And he, he was so, so divine in that way that he woke up people and he made them see beauty. Yes, yes. He, and food, he, he knew that a food was a conduit. It, it could connect people as most black people know. You go home after church on Sunday, you have a big supper with your family, you sit around a table and you just enjoy the eats. And Patrick loved nothing more than just feeding people potato salad, fried chicken. I used to go to his house every every other Sunday, not every Sunday, um, for breakfast. And he would sit in that uh, kitchen and he would have the best sausages and pancakes. How he found the ingredients in Paris to have sausages and 
The American store, the American restaurant. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, I don't remember that, darling, but I'm sure that's where he found them. But listen, he, it didn't matter. You could have the ingredients, but it's who made them, who put them together. He could make the most wonderful Southern breakfast, and that breakfast would go on until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And he would just <laughs> sit there and eat the food and talk and just love, just love. And, you well, know, Patrick, I, Patrick I call it also... The old kitchen, uh, the old kitchen. Uh, pressing hair situation, all the girls getting ready with makeup and eating at the same time. Same time. Uh, I have a question from the audience. I can't read. Let me see. Question. I, I think I have a question. Could you put it back up? Can you describe? Well, the question is, can you describe your favorite? Ensemble. Ensemble. Hold on. Can you describe your favorite ensemble from Patrick Kelly you ever wore? That's all three of you, okay? Okay. I have okay. several. I have several. Of course, the button heart dress. That was just the iconic, the yes. signature piece. I have taken my best photographs in that. And talking about photographs, we did work with the great Tuscany with all of his ads. And I was in all of his ads. And you're talking about the energy. Mm -hmm. So it was a button dress. And he had this velvet leopard piece off the shoulder. I loved, love, love, because I love cheetah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was always body contour. Mm -hmm. So I love the cheetah print. And I love the button dress with the heart. That's my favorite. That was my favorite. Pat? Well, of course, tonight, Josephine, darling. <laughs> ah, you're, you're first Josephine. favorite, the, the bra. Every box. time it's he and I and those bananas. <laughs> ah. We're always shaking our bananas. So, I mean, for me, <laughs> it's that kind of, you know, change of character and being able to be <laughs> playful. And, um, Audrey, 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 your favorite. My favorite is, is my leopard dress because it was very, very sexy. And when Patrick made that dress for me, he said, Audrey, now get into this dress. And then he said, you need the shawl. And I have the shawl. I wish I could get into that dress again, but it's all right. That was my favorite dress. And I have a picture of Patrick and I together in that dress because we went out uh, to the Fashion Group International Gala night. And, and we were stars that night because we danced, you know, those... <laughs> Everybody was, was that in New York or Paris? Was that New York or Paris? New York, the fashion group in New York. International. <laughs> good, 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 good. Fashion International at the Waldorf Astoria. But you know what? I got to show you something. Bill Cunningham just wow. took a picture of me in 1989 on an Easter Sunday. And I have on Patrick's, that's Patrick's hat. Oh, Patrick no. I, that hat. I still have that hat. Oh, wow. It's very just me, Baker. It's very just me, Baker. I, I, I still have that hat, and, and Bill wrote a nice little note for me back on the back. That's so That's nice. That's it's nice to have these great memories. And I'm working on my memoir, everybody. Yeah. At last. Good. You have to. You have to. At last. I, yes. said, I, I said if Cicely Tyson could get hers out at 96, I could get mine out at 86. You can and do if it. Cicely Tyson got hers out, and then she died the weekend it, it was launched. I know it, wow. but I'm going to get mine out, too. <laughs> Can you come back? I'm, can you come back in? Okay. Okay. Wow. So listen, was anyone there when Patrick passed away in Paris? Did anyone see him when he was ill in his last days? I, I, I did. Yeah. I saw him. In the I hospital. saw him. Good room. I saw Liz him. Liz was with him because Liz called me. Mm -hmm. Actually, had flown, I had flown all night um, once we found out that he was ill. Mm -hmm. And it was such a sh shocking feeling. So I jumped on the plane. Flew all night and we went right into the hospital. Mm -hmm. And when I went into the room, he was just sitting there. He was looking, and after a while, he, he kind of started like kind of warming up. He said, You know, there's some chicken in the back. I'm telling uh. you right now. This is <laughs> and no, really, I did. I actually saw him uh, there. And we began to talk and he began to, you know, walk and talk and try to tell Joseph, even at the end, even at the end, and I did see him, his spirit was still up. His, his spirit was still, it, it was just unbelievable to see an individual with so much life and so much love, you know, in a hospital bed. Yes. And even at that time. And I want everybody. He didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't go down. He did not go down. No, he didn't go down. Didn't go I'm down. telling you, he would tell me stories like, I heard this bell ringing 
And I said, oh my God, is that Gabriel on the steps outside? He's going, no, 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 no. He said, oh my God, I thought I was, he said, no, I'm still here. I'm still here. But he just had jokes even at oh, the end. Oh my goodness. No, no, he had jokes even at the end, everyone. Yes. His spirit was amazing. But let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about Patrick's work ethic. Yes. He yes. was a worker. Huh? As much fun as he had, as much uh, cooking as he did. Worked. He, he worked. Worked. Unbelievable. Ask me how I know because he would make me stay up all night the night before the show to try on every piece. <laughs> Iman's piece. Six this six was piece. And all people. night, I'm telling you, <laughs> all night. And I was like, Patrick, I want to look fresh. <laughs> the next, he said, I need to see my collection. I had to try on everybody's garment. You were the city model. Agent. You were the house model. You were the house model, then. You were the house model. Yes, I was. And That's I'm an important you, part. That's an important place to be, darling. No, I was up in it, baby. And it was Janet. Remember Janet, Audrey? Yes, I remember Janet. It was Janet and myself. He saw that entire line and he was showing anywhere from how many pieces, Audrey? A hundred and something pieces? At, at least a hundred pieces. At least a hundred pieces. Maybe a hundred and twenty. I'm telling you, I know what. This guy was unbelievable. Mm. Detailed. He saw everything, every thread. And he everything. made them himself. <laughs> That's the funny thing. He <laughs> did actually <laughs> sew them up himself. He was, yes. He was amazing. His work ethic was crazy. He, he, he was a hard working person like James Brown. He was yes. the hardest working person in fashion business. <laughs> he, he worked hard. He, he was like boundless that. in energy. Boundless in energy. I wanted to eat up his sleep. No, he didn't. I'm telling you. Question. Andre, can you read it for me, uh, Magic? Because I can read this it. Question for Andre. How did you meet Patrick Kelly? Oh, well, I met Patrick Kelly at a friend's apartment who were designers. Uh, I met, I met him when he was fashion designers. Um, two designers named Kevin and Thompson. Kevin Tom, Kevin Roberts and Thompson. Kevin and Robert. Yes! Kevin and Robert. Ah! Kevin they were men's wear designers. Yes. Oh, I love them. So they, yeah, they had an atelier in downtown. And yes. I was being dressed by them. They used to make me beautiful trousers. And I would have like one pen, one leg would be white and black. Like the Munya skirt, the Munya wore a suit in Saint Laurent that was black on yes. one side and white on the other. Yes. And I went to Kevin and Robinson, make me a pair of trousers like that, like Kevin the Munya suit. And Patrick walked in one day and he, they met him and he walked in very shy, very unassuming. He didn't eat up the space and he was lovely and charming. And he told me to bless his life and he had a Vuitton that he still wanted to look at. And then he met a friend of mine, uh, a South American from Buenos Aires. His name was Javier. And he and Javier became romantically uh, uh, aligned. Oh, and with Javier, Javier Arruelio, he moved to Paris at Christmas, one Christmas Eve. Javier gave him a ticket and he moved to Paris. And so he got to Paris with Javier. And he, he stayed in Javier's apartment near the saint uh for the first six months when he was in Paris. That's how he got to Paris, because he was in a romantic uh, in a romantic liaison with Javier from Buenos Aires. I gave him the ticket and he, he used it to go fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> well, that little, little sweetie pie. Does it doesn't matter. matter. Does not everything. matter. Does not matter. He does everything. He <laughs> doesn't matter. He, he, he did it all out of the goodness of his heart. He, he was fresh. He was sexy. And he loved. And they had a romantic, they had a turbulent relationship in the end. But they remained friends, and Patrick got to Paris, and he just made it happen for him. He just got that atelier and made it happen. And when you went into the atelier, you saw all these rare floor to ceiling original posters of Josephine Baker yeah, yeah. that he knew to find in the Paris flea market. These yeah. were rare posters that would cost a fortune. They should have been in museums, and the whole place was decorated with floor to ceiling Josephine Baker portraits. But the funny thing was nobody was interested in Josephine Baker in that no, moment. And he no. brought, it, brought her back to life for the fashion world. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He did. He did. He did. He did. He did. He, did. he, did. he was just great. I, I, I just think that he was, uh, I wish I could see the show. I saw the clothes going into the show and I thought it was just incredible. And I've forgotten a lot of the things like the, 
the deep, intricate embroideries on the dresses with the buttons, you know, making. You know, it's so funny, Andre, because we always used to sing this song together from the minute we got together. Da, 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 buttons and bows, buttons and bows. <laughs> the old cowboy song. And you put on those buttons and bows. <laughs> we used to sing that to each other all the time. <laughs> He, the, I bet he was a great dancer. Was he a great dancer? I know it's from dancing. Was he a great dancer? Yeah. Oh, great yeah. dancer. He could dance. He could dance. Oh, I'm sure he, could. I'm sure he, could. he was a great dancer. Sure he, he was could. a great dancer. He was a great dancer. Yeah, no, in Paris, everybody was so dressed up, you know, just being dressed up was the dance and you could just sort of walk around and prance like this. <laughs> you didn't have to do much because your clothes did it for you. You know, <laughs> and all those Well, buttons. we were all young then, so we all looked great because we're younger. So of course you just dressed up and stood around and posed. Stood around and <laughs> they were all posing too. Mr. Saint Laurent was posing. Mr. Oh, Saint Laurent was, was posing. He was always posing. This was always his pose. posing. With but a the cigarette, he was always at posing. Club, at the club set, you know, we had dinners there, and there would be yes. Eve, and there would be Patrick, and there would be Claude, and everybody. All of these wonderful people, like a Grace and Andre, used to go too. Yes. And I we all have this champagne nights and, uh, you know, and they put the special music on for each person. Oh, so yeah. So each had their own theme song when they walked into the club oh, yeah. downstairs. It's true. And I remember I went there one night with Diana Ross because she was in Paris. Yeah. And we had lunch one Saturday at Maxine's with our friend Betty Cartrou and Francois Cartrou. And we went later to club set. And when Diana Ross, we walked downstairs and we got on a bone cat and then they put on uh, her, her music. And the place went wild. They played yes. her song and they just went wild. And she loved it. She got to start dancing. But the best <laughs> thing was being at the bar, standing at the bar. And I just. Oh, remember, what, that was the best. I remember you coming to this nightclub, which you had to have a special little window open. Yeah. Someone had to peek. It was like a speakeasy. Yeah. And you walked in and there was this beveled, mirrored bar with these beautiful mm -hmm. boys behind mm -hmm. his heart. And so everybody would have their very best tuxedo on, all the boys. And well, all upstairs the would be the restaurant. Upstairs is the restaurant, downstairs is yeah. my club. And, and this, this was no bigger than a matchbox. This was not a big club. Very like small. Before. This was no, very small. Very small. On team. On team. Very on team. Yes, and you stand there, and there would be Patrick and his, you know, his his tuxedo, and you would just think, my God, what did he do with his overalls tonight? <laughs> 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 Last question. Okay. <laughs> Can you read Patrick, it for me, Magic Darling? Um, Patrick Kelly's. Do you see Patrick Kelly's influence in fashion to fashion and style today? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. of course. Of yes. course, the clean, the clean film dresses, the the third skin dresses, the 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 playful embroidery on dresses, the surrealism, the surrealism, the surrealism. Patrick was about surrealism. Yes, he Industry was. and surrealism. The gollywog or the doll, a whole there was a whole dress for dolls. Do you remember that? Everyone, the dress that was all full of the little dolls, Audrey has in her cleavage. Yes, we remember the right. whole dress of dolls, right? Yes. That's the doll. Yes, yes. doll and with the little pin. Yeah, unbelievable. And he, I, I remember so well. I thought, oh, these are marvelous clothes, and just everything he did, and they were so intricate and sophisticated in their idea and their concept. Uh, the idea of a, a dress with dolls or a dress with but you art. just think you just think in the south what did you have you had not very much at that time and if you weren't very wealthy you'd have to make your doll clothes and so you maybe, make your doll clothes yeah make doll clothes until you got real dolls like magic you know yes <laughs> and Pat yes and Audrey I, I think because of all the embellishment that he would put on it remember the Eiffel Tower dress oh wow yeah. Yeah. Remember I, that well. Yeah, well, that I, I wore that in the ad. The, the, the embellishment, the detailing was so amazing. And I try to tell my students now, the fashion students now, to educate them on Patrick Kelly. They've never heard about Patrick Kelly. Oh my so we God. have to go through it and talk about famous designers. So we're talking about famous designers. And of course, we could know Givenchy and Chanel and Dolce. And, Patrick, and, now, and that's Patrick Kelly. And now there's Patrick Kelly, and they say who? And then I will just have to pull out my book. And there like, are a lot oh of God. famous designers who did not make money. Patrick Kelly made money before he died. Linda Vuana, Linda Vuana Coke signed a deal. Patrick Kelly was a businessman. He made money, and he was smart. This was not some little naive person. He wasn't naive. He was a smart man. 
Very and smart. that's where his, his legacy endures. It endures because the young has put on this great show. I hope it's great. I know it is because I know that you all gave clothes for it. And they put a book out. I haven't seen the book yet. I think they're going to send me one. I think they're going to send oh, you all one. Oh, yeah. I'd love to that. So I know it's a good thing. And I don't know that now this will help his legacy to endure because now the young, which is a world class museum, has given this show and has oh. brought us together. And I think they brought yeah. us together with these remembrances, remembrances, which are just so wonderful and warm and heartfelt and, and true. True. No one has said nothing negative about Mr. Patrick. And nothing. There was nothing negative about him ever. Wow. He was beautiful and he, he really was, was he was a, he was an angel of God. He was sent on the earth to spread love and joy. It was all about the joy that he could give. And he I always said thank everyone. He, he thanked me so many times. He would send the most incredible red roses uh, to yes. my apartment in Paris. And he was the one who introduced me to Cristal Champagne. I had Ooh. never Oh, so Patrick <laughs> introduced me to Cristal, darling. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, my God. He taught you something really marvelous. Marveloso. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, well, to, we the, are so happy. There's so another, happy all there's another question. Together. Oh, what's the question, Magic? It says, oh, it went away. Could you put it back in, please, right in the end. chat? Patrick Kelly's. Oh, that was Patrick Carley's influence in fashion style. Okay, yeah. that's good. So okay. uh, just pretty much the final words that we want to say. I want to say thank you to the museum for putting on such a beautiful, beautiful presentation. I, I, I was not there, but I did see the photographs of what you did. Life-size murals of Patrick's work, ads, the the mannequins that they dressed, the way they did it, not only in San Francisco, I saw the one in, in, in Philadelphia as well that we went to, but this one in San Francisco, thank you so much for displaying the talent and the gifts of our friend, Patrick Kelly. And introducing him and reintroducing him to the world and the young people thank today. You. Because thank if you. Patrick was alive, he would be in his seventies. So the yes. young people, don't know about him in this way when the schools come out and take the young students to to the museum wow yes. they'll know about patrick kelly just like they know about hubert de givenchy or a chanel or Thank you to the museum we know that in this spirit of patrick kelly a dream can come true and yes. the that he had to deal with in the life that he had before and where he came from he is like the lotus on the mud he rose to the greatest position in fashion that you can imagine. And for that, we, we admire him for having that integrity of character. And you can see it in his work and you'll be able to see it at the museum. So we appreciate that. I want to thank you first, you three beautiful ladies who were very much part of the universe of Patrick Kelly in a deep, deep way, profound way. These wonderful memories are like Poussin Madeleines of Marcel Proust. And I think that it's so wonderful that we came together and you took the time to share these with the world and that young people will now know who Patrick Kelly is. Yes. And I'd like to thank the, the Young Museum for asking us to come together in this moment of true remembrance of a great, great African-American man came up from the Mississippi Delta and achieved the American dream, the American dream of joy, love, and success and happiness. He may have died, but he didn't die it, it, unhappy. He gave the world light and love. And I think all of us are here to give light and love. I know we four are, <laughs> you ladies and myself. That's what we're all about. And we just want to say, we live in love, we live in life and say yes to life. And yes, yes we can do it. And thank and you all for this evening. And one more thing, I just want to say, thank God for fashion. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say, Fashion has done me great, a great deal of greatness. Thank uh -huh. God for fashion. Thank God for my life. But I just want to thank you all for coming to this moment, Magic, Pat, and thank Audrey. Thank you. Because we are icons in our own spheres, in our own bodies. And we are part of the legacy of the world of African-American style. Not <laughs> fashion, but style. 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 Right. Let's style. talk about style. And people saw us for our style. You know, Mr. Saint Laurent didn't see you all. 
including you, Audrey, bypass you up with Ebony Fashion Fair. They knew the style reigned in your bones. When I'll never get you packed, Cleveland, when you came out on the sun around one way, and that slim black dress with a pale lime green skirt over the top and a fuchsia bow. You remember that moment? Yes, we were together and we danced backstage because yes. that was the most silly thing we'd ever seen. And we loved it. We loved that kind of fantasy. Yes. So this fantasy becomes reality. And to the young, we embrace you and we are so grateful to have had this opportunity. So we're going to sign off and say good night and love, peace, happiness, and joy to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, baby. We love you. Thank you so much, Andre, Pat, Audrey, and Magic. What an honor to work with you and host you all here in this one virtual space. We cannot thank you enough. Please join us for our Patrick Kelly virtual programming coming up Wednesday, November 3rd. For more information on our upcoming programs, upcoming exhibitions, and all of the wonderful things happening at the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco, please check out our website and make sure you book your tickets in advance. Tickets.famsf.org. And thank you so much for your support. We hope to see you next time.